McCarthy basically guaranteed a win, going out there and saying Dallas will get this victory. What is your response when you hear a head coach saying that? I think it's interesting. I don't think it's important. I think that's the big mistake is because as far as I'm concerned, you know, you do that for a couple of reasons. One is you want to get in our head. And so I've told our players, this is, that's interesting. It's not important. What's important is our preparation, getting ready to play on Sunday. Secondly, he's trying to convince his team. You know, so again, I think that's another mistake because he's now made it about him and what he said. It's not about his players anymore. So I think that's the big mistake. That's why, to me, you know, you don't do those things. What you do is you focus in on, you get ready, and you play football. We show up on Sunday, and we'll see what happens. That is exactly why you're my coach. W Ron in the chat. W coach in the chat. That is exactly how you handle your business in a public space. You don't go out there and guarantee wins because you don't know what can happen. You go out there with the blue-collar approach and say, we're going to show up on Sunday and we'll see what happens. W coach, W Ron, that's why you're my coach. Now let's get straight into today's video. Whoa, 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 whoa. Too. What's going on? It's Juan Gotti here. I'm here to preview Washington, Dallas, FedEx Field, 1 p.m. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL. In this case, I watched the football team. Let's get straight into today's video. But before we talk about this game, I just got to address something. <laughs> I smell a whole lot of welling going on here. So let me tell you guys what I'm talking about. So you guys know Trayvon Diggs, Cowboys cornerback. So bro was asked by one of the, you know, one of the, one of their reporters, because he grew up in this area, right, 10 minutes from, from FedEx Field. And he told his reporters he grew up a Cowboys fan. He never been to FedEx Field. He never been to a game. He wasn't a fan of the Redskins back then, obviously. But on Twitter, they bagged him. They bagged him because three years ago, he got a tweet that says, let's go scans HDTR. So what you welling for? I, I I get what you trying to do, though. You know what I'm saying? You a Cowboys fan. You, you done switched sides, so you want to fake like you was never rocking with us when that wasn't the case. I, I get you, bro. And that's why your father's coming home, and he's going to make his round trip. And I'm talking about 1-7, Terry McClellan, going to make his rounds home, and he's going to finally see you. And he's going to give you that business like he did last year. Now, let's get officially into this video. I just had to, I just had to address the welling that was going on here because, because he, he, he was lying. You know what I'm saying? So, Washington, 6-6, six 8-4 and six, eight and four Dallas. This is a huge, huge game at the crib at FedEx Field. I need you guys to be rocking this Sunday, please, on my behalf. Rock that stadium. Make these Cowboys fans not want to. Come in the FedEx field ever again. That's how raucous I need this crowd to be Sunday. I've been asking you. Jared Patterson asked you. Terry McLaurin asked you. Jonathan Allen's giving away five tickets. Ron Rivera has asked you guys to be there. So make sure you guys go to the game. And if you are going, make sure you guys are loud. And if you aren't going, you already know where to come. Pull up the game on your TV and then on your phone, on your computer, having one guy to talk of sports. Click on this channel and watch the live stream while you're watching the game, while I'm watching the game. That's how we do it over here, man. I need everybody locked in this Sunday. It takes all of us, man. We all got to play our role. So, this is a huge game again. I mean, I don't, I understand. I've been saying that a lot, and you guys understand that it's not just the Cowboys. That And that by itself is a huge game. But it's for a chance to be one place out of uh, first place in the NFC East. It's for respect. It's for Mike McCarthy saying they're going to win. It's for to show these guys that they're wrong. It, it's for everything. Everything is on the line for, for this game. And we need to show up this Sunday. We can't allow these Cowboys to walk into our stadium and beat us, especially all the stuff that they said. Yeah, you thought yesterday was bad? Jerry Jones got on the radio today and talked about how FedEx Field is their second home. How they get the most support at FedEx Field. We can't allow that, man. 
We can't. And I understand the team has been bad, man, these years, a decade plus, pretty much since Dan Snyder took over the took over the team back in, you know, the uh, mid-90s or whatnot, or the late 90s. I think it was actually 1999 when he bought the team, I think, actually, from correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, yeah, I understand that, guys. But Sunday, it's all on the line, baby. It's all on the line, and I need you guys there. Now let's get a word from today's sponsor. What's up? Juan Gotti here. Are you or do you know somebody that's a Charles County resident? If so, this message is for you. All right, so look, June 28th is a huge day for Charles County as they will be having the Board of Commissioners election. And you don't know who you want to vote for? Well, you came to the right place because it's only one right answer. Ralph Patterson. Vote Ralph Patterson right now if you want to make your Charles County living that much better. What makes Ralph Patterson the perfect man for the job, you may ask? That's simple. He's one of you. Ralph Patterson walked these same Charles County streets just like you. He's a McDonough alumni. So what perfect man for the job than a person just like you? Ralph Patterson is a Democrat. Access and opportunity now is what he likes. Lives by. He has a vision of moving Charles County forward. He's tired of it being in the same place. Economic development is his main goal. Creating more money and jobs for Charles County is what Ralph Patterson wants to do for his people. Everyone loves the internet, so with Ralph Patterson getting elected, he'll make sure it's 5G countywide. Are you tired of paying a lot of money for your Charles County home? Ralph Patterson plans to make affordable living throughout the whole county. So vote Ralph Patterson. Let's get into this injury report before we get into how Washington could win this game. So game status out, Wes Reiter, Jordan K. Uh, Wes Reiter's done with the ankle. I don't think he plays until probably that second Dallas game. Maybe he comes back next week. Uh, but I think he probably plays that next Cowboys game. Jordan K is a big, big blow in my opinion just because he's a special teams demon. He isn't out there as a linebacker much, but he is a special teams demon. So he's going to be out. And we're already thin at linebacker with Khalid Cutson going on IR and Jamin Davis and Landon Collins banged up. So we are thin at linebacker. We may see some David Mayo. And I know. I, I, no, you guys don't want to see no David Mayo. So let's get into the questionables. We only got two players out. Questionable Landon Collins dealing with the foot. He says he's about 90% in his press conference yesterday. So I, I think he plays. Um, Jamin Davis dealing with the concussion. Um, he was a limited practice, uh, participant yesterday. He was a full practice uh, participant today. So I think Jamin Davis plays. I don't think he had a concussion. I think he just had small symptoms of a concussion. Uh, JD McKissick, on the other hand, I think he plays too. Um, he's questionable as always. Uh, uh, also dealing with the uh, concussion uh two he missed last week's game and i think he is going to be back he is a huge huge part of this offense wide receiver curtis samuel questionable too they treat him like antonio gibson early in the season he's good they're just gonna always have him winner because they want to keep him um and, and want a pitch count um and i think the more he plays the more that pitch count you know um, exceeds its limits. It raises, I should say. So he's going to be on here every week because they don't want to stress and, and they don't want to rush Curtis Samuel, you know, to fully participate in practice because he doesn't need to, right? So now let's flip sides and talk about the Dallas Cowboys. They're pretty much healthy. I mean, they've been talking about this all week, how they're getting Demarcus Lawrence back, how they're getting Randy Gregory back, how they're getting Neville Gallimore back and all that and uh, and how this pass rush is going to be so lethal and Heineke isn't going to have no time. They've been talking about that all week. So we, we pretty much know what their status is. They're missing a big, big part of their offense, in my opinion, Tony Pollard. He's dealing with the – I forgot. I was watching Louis T's uh, video yesterday when he's basically was talking about the foot. Apparently, he's dealing with the uh, – I don't know, list Frank. I've never heard of it in my life. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what it's called. But uh, essentially, I think it's a, a sprained middle part of your foot. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's something. I don't know. I, I really don't. I'm not going to sit here and act like I do. But nevertheless to say, he is probably going to be out. He's probably going to be out. They're trying to say he's going to play. It's all about pain tolerance. So they're going to do everything they can, that he can to play. They're going to give him some painkillers. They're going to shoot it up in his foot. Um, so we'll see. But even if he does play, he's not going to be 100%. He's not going to be 100%. Micah Parsons, their, their star linebacker slash edge rusher, um, he's dealing with a hip. I don't know how much that hinders him. I think he plays, but uh, he's dealing with the hip. Um, Cedric Wilson, I want to say, was, uh, was a little nicked up, too. Noah Brown is going to be out, too, who is a special teams guy for them, and he can come in and play a little receiver. So, neither less, neither this to say, um, they're healthy. They have a little nicks and bruises, and Ezekiel Elliott dealing with the knee, but I think he plays. 
Um, but again, they're coming in more healthy than us, and uh, it's no excuses, right? We got to go out there and perform with what we got. So that is the injury report. Now let's transition into how Washington could win this game. Simple. Key number one that I say every single week, we got to find a way to continue to create interior pressure. When we get interior pressure, we rattle the quarterback's cage because they can't step up and look and look down the field and tuck it and run. They're forced to bounce outside, and when they get outside, they're going to meet Shaka Tony, they're going to meet James Smith Williams, and that's going to either get there, either going to get hit as they throw, they're going to either have to, you know, uh, make a bad throw, force a throw, or they're going to either have to throw it out of bounds. You know what I'm saying? Especially Doc Prescott not being the runner that he once was. So when he feels that pressure up the middle, he's going down. So we need to find a way to continue to get pressure up the middle. Matt Ioannidis, Jonathan Allen, who's having an amazing year. Deron Payne, Tim Settle, we need you guys. We need you guys more than ever, man. Especially Deron and John, man. We really, we really do. So find a way to get interior pressure. My second key, get your playmakers the ball early and often. I'm talking more so Curtis Samuel. Because in my opinion, I understand we're trying to work Curtis Samuel back into the offense because he missed so much time. But I personally just think we only are using him for for, for trick situations and, and, and screens. We're not really using him as that wide receiver, too, that we bought him in to be. I understand uh, he that's his game. He wants to be used all over the place. But we got to use him more as a wide receiver. We really do. I'm, I'm talking, I want to see him go down the field. I'm tired of seeing him go side to side. I mean, I understand, again, he's a guy that's going to be used all over the place, and I love that. That's just another part of, the, of his game. But the guy is a wide receiver, too. So let's find a way to give him the ball more as a receiver. Obviously, we need, we need to get Terry McLaurin the ball early and often. He even said in his press conference that he doesn't know if Trayvon Diggs is a traveler, so he may, he may get matched up against Anthony Brown. If that happens, just throw it up. Just throw it up because you know if Terry doesn't catch it, it's pass interference. Because Anthony Brown can't hold him. You seen what he did? He couldn't. He couldn't check a thirty-four year old, thirty-five now actually, Deshaun Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Deshaun Jackson smoked him multiple times. So when you see that Heineke one-on-one matchup, just throw it up to Terry. He's either gonna catch it or it's gonna be a pass interference. As for Trayvon Diggs, your dad's coming home. Your dad is coming home to see you. He's coming home to see you. He's coming to make his rounds. And you know, it's holiday season, so I know you've been waiting for him. He's coming, and he's going to do you in how he normally does, right? Uh, next key, besides get your playmakers the ball, Curtis Samuel, Terry McClellan, Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKenzie, all of our weapons, DeAndre Carter, Adam Humphreys, find a way to give all these guys the ball, Ricky Sears Jones, John Bates, everybody. Find a way to share the sugar because we've been doing that a lot, and when we do that, we're successful. Next key. Find a way to neutralize this pass rush. They've been talking so crazy about this pass rush, about how Heineke isn't going to have no time. Demarcus Lawrence is going to have about a sack. They said Micah Parsons is going to have three sacks. Okay. So we got to find a way to neutralize that. I'm not too worried about, you know, Charles Leno going up against Demarcus Lawrence. I'm more so worried about C. Luke versus Micah Parsons. Uh, but, however, I think we're going to hold him down. I think we're going to hold it down. I got faith in our O line. They got a little, you know, they got a little pressure off that right side with Max Crosby last week. But I, I, I think we're good. I think we're good. You know what I'm saying? So find a way to neutralize that pass rush. And then my last key, we got to find a way to to contain their offensive weapons. I hate the Dallas Cowboys, but I gotta be a realist here. Their offense is loaded. From Dak Prescott to Zeke to Tony Pollard, who I think, you know, is going to be out. Zeke is banged up, too, but he's a weapon. Uh, Amari Cooper, they got a plethora of wide receivers. Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Cedric Wilson, Noah Brown. Uh, they got a ton of wide receivers, right? Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin at the tight end. Their offense is loaded. So we got to find a way to neutralize and contain this offense. I don't think we stop them completely, but I think we can find a way to definitely contain them. Now, I want to talk about Taylor Heineke, and then we'll get out of here. TH, number four, the real number four. Just go out there and be yourself, my boy. Go out there and be yourself. These last four weeks, you've been going out there and playing like yourself. You've been the off-schedule guy. You've been the taking-the-risk kind of guy. You've been using your legs, been making the smart throws, been protecting yourself for the most part. Go out there and continue to play like that, and I guarantee, I don't, ooh, ooh. Was I about to guarantee a win? No, I wasn't. I was going to say I guarantee he has success against this Dallas Cowboys defense. So I got faith in our boys. I think we go out there and make it five straight, hopefully. Um, and now 
let's get into my prediction. So, I kind of spoiled it. I kind of spoiled it, but you already knew what it was. I got us winning this game. I got us winning this game 23-14. I think Washington be up 17-14, and we go on one of our killer drives where we get the ball with about 10 minutes, and we milk it down to about three, and then we get a put-away touchdown by Antonio Gibson. He bounces out to the outside. We go up 23-14 with the chance to go up 24-14, and then uh, Brian Johnson misses the point after, which isn't going to affect us. Because we'll be up two scores. So yeah, man, there you have it. Let me know what you guys think about this video down below. It's Dallas week. It's go time. And I cannot wait till Sunday. As always, me and boy Juan Gotti. Like, comment, subscribe, help to watch the football team. I'm out. Peace. Give me. Give me. Uh, me one time. That's going to get you popped. Get you popped. Mm -hmm. Get you dropped. Mm -hmm. Slide on the one way that get you popped. Give me a lot of money